so my name is Audrey Love and I work a lot with electronics and textiles and metals. And I'm not inspired by any specific craft, I'm inspired by the materials that I touch and get inspired by. So there's a lot of like crazy things in building my process. One of the things Scott just asked us was if a coffee bean was conductive and one way to test those kinds of principles is with a very cool electronic tool called a multimeter. The multimeter uh, measures lots of things, one of it being conduct conductivity as well as voltage and uh, Basically, it's a very handy measuring tool for those working with electronics. So I've set the, I set the multimeter to measure conductivity. I'm going to take the two probes. This is the ground probe and the live probe. And ah, it is not conductive at all. And I can tell, besides launching it off the end of the table, <laughs> um, because the value on the multimeter isn't changing. Even with the slightest bit of conductivity, even between my two fingers, unless I have a set wrong, let's say between this two thread, it will register a value. Oh my gosh, I'm totally fumbling though. Ah. There we go. There we go. Not, now all of a sudden you see that the numbers are moving up and you see that this is not very resist resistive to that thread. So yeah, this is just one very handy tool that I use a lot to rely on. But that said, I use this out of necessity often for very scientific and precise things. And if I'm really just trying to get started and make something fast, I don't even need it. Um, so, that said, I brought a couple things that I wanted to talk about today. One of the things that we talked about during our discussion was um, the danger of electricity and how you can diffuse that danger by bringing it closer to the body. And so, when I talk about bringing electricity closer to the body, I'm thinking of very small amounts of electricity. Like this is a coin cell battery or a watch cell battery. Um, very teeny tiny, emits three volts of electricity. Um, with a grounded panel on the front, or a positive panel on the front, and then the negative panel on the back. And um, we can do really cool things with these coin cell batteries, like take little tiny LEDs that are jammed into their tape holders way too well. There we go. Um, and pull it up to the coin cell battery and check if the coin cell battery is still working by getting it on the right orientation. And voila! Just by holding the leads to the panel, you can make sure that uh, your battery is working before you start sewing it into any of your projects. Um, so yeah, this is coin cell battery is very handy for making little tiny electronics that you can stash your power pack. Because often the problem with making wearable electronics is like, cool, I made this really awesome thing. Where am I going to put all of the things I need to power it? And so these little things kind of make it much more discreet and um, give uh, artists a lot of wiggle room um, when it comes to embedding power sources into their projects. So I'm going to put this little coin cell battery aside. Um, another thing I rely on a lot, which is what I was just demonstrating with the um, multimeter, is this conductive thread. And this conductive thread is basically four or five plies of very finely extruded stainless steel that's been spun um, into a thread. And I'm able to sew with it just like any other thread, but I wouldn't say it's the kind of thread that you'd want to make a garment with because it's, one, it's expensive, uh, and it's structurally maybe not great at holding your clothes together. But it is really great at conducting electricity to certain things. So, in each of these little kits that I prepared, found that back up, there are these little, itty bitty tiny LEDs that are in there with big giant holes on them that, so these are each LEDs and they light up on their own. Um, I can give a little demo here, but there's a positive channel and a negative um, channel that power will flow through. So po power will always flow, power positive to negative, positive to ground. Electricity is always trying to ground itself, and you can have a common ground. Um, so these little um, LEDs have been embedded into lots of other things, and I'm just going to hook up some alligator clips really fast. One here. Oh, a little stick. Sorry, I want something really fast. Alright, just make it So there's that. And then this one, which is covered in playa dust because sometimes you need to troubleshoot electronics in the middle of the desert. <laughs> um, that and then we'll just stick a battery in there. 
So this has, this little embroidery has an LED inside of it already. And so I'm going to hook up the positive, the positive here, and the negative to the negative here. And I think I actually reversed the polarity, so I'm going to redo that. Up. What's happening, guy? There oh, there it goes. Yeah, it just wasn't making a strong enough connection. There we go. So yeah, there's a little LED that I've sewn into there using the conductive thread. Um, and I really, on the inside here, and I've kind of made a more deconstructed version so you can see its guts. Um, there's a positive rail on this side of the ice cream cone and a negative rail on this side of the ice cream cone. And if we hook up the same battery, power connector to this, and I think this is positive. Yeah, you'll see it there. And this is my prototype to see how um, the LED would look with different kinds of diffusion. With this bottom one here, I didn't have anything that's diffusing the LED besides the embroidery floss, and I was like, that doesn't look all that great, but What's a really great light diffuser is putting a dollop of hot glue on it, and all of a sudden you're able to spread because the pl the, the translucent plastic um, is imperfect. The light is able to bounce around with inside the hot glue quite a bit, and you're able to get these like nice diffuse shapes, like in this top ice cream cone scoop. 